This is the fourth video in a five-part tutorial series on how to use Blended Chis with QGIS to create 3D models of geological structures. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create 3D geological bodies that match 2D geological models and outcrop data. We will work through two examples, a rest fault from the Swiss Jura Mountains and a tide recumbent shear fault from the Swiss Alps. Assuming you have seen the first three tutorials, which are referenced in below, and know how to use blendages to generate and shape 3D bodies, we will begin with the first example. We will construct a stress sheet based on a 2D geological model. As an added memoir, I have summarized in this slide the steps we will follow. First, go to Top View and import the geological model as a 2D cross-section. Import it as image reference or image background. We will use the modifier Deform with a Curve to construct the hanging part of the stress sheet that forms through brittle folding and bending above a ramp. Add a Bezier curve and shape it according to the geometry of the hanging stress sheet. This done, add the rock column, go into edit mode and subdivide it further in as many rock units as required and assign colors to each rock unit. Form now a large rock slab using the scaling pivot and subdivide the slab further in edit mode. Now we are going to execute the modifier deformed with a curve following the steps shown in this slide. Make a copy of the rock slab, select the rock slab in object mode, go to the modifier tab and select deform with a curve. Choose the Bezier curve you just created as the curve and slide the rock stratigraphic slab into it. You can edit the geometric shape of the oversurfaced slab in two ways to match the geological model more accurately. Before pressing apply in the modifier, adjust the shape of the fold by editing the Bezier curve. Or after pressing apply in the modifier, you can select the rock slab and adapt the shape of the stress sheet in edit mode. Using the 2D profile, you can start now constructing the 3D model of the deformed stress sheet. You can select all faces or select individual rock units in edit mode and extrude them freely or along an axis, rotate and scale them to fit the geological outcrop situation. The stress sheet in this case is constructed without any geological constraints. The constructed body will not have an internal structure, meaning it is empty, unless you choose the option Extrude Manifold. 
In the video linked below, I present an example of a full-scale 3D construction from the Eurofolded thrust belt, where I separately constructed a brittle deformation of the different limestone layers and added the mechanical weaker shale units afterward. This is an exercise beyond the scope of this tutorial, which covers only the basic steps for constructing a 3D geological model. Ultimately, you may also want to fill the deformed rock bodies with voxels using Blender add-on voxel image or third-party software. We will now move on to our next example, which involves constructing a recumbent tight sheared fold of the Helvetics rest and fold belt. This fold was formed under several kilometers of overburden at elevated pressure and temperature conditions with a combination of brittle to ductile deformation mechanisms at force. Unlike the first example, we will not be using the modifier deform with a curve to construct this fold. This is because the tight bend of the fold requires a high subdivision in the area shown in blue. And secondly, the outcrop is oriented obliquely to the fold orientation. Therefore, we will take a different approach, because we want ultimately to have the fold constructed in its true orientation, which is defined by its fold axis, the actual fold plane or the normal to the actual plane, which in this case I have established from field maps and local measurements. We will begin by drawing the shape of the recumbent shear fold from the outcrop image and then finalize it in 3D space using a high resolution digital elevation model, DM. This will be done after projecting the outcrop model onto the normal of the actual fold plane. To construct the tight fold, we will follow the procedure summarized in this slide. Note, when rotating and scaling, I will snap the cursor to the relevant vertex, switch the transform pivot point to 3D cursor and transform as necessary. Once we have approximate the fold shape, we will execute the projection along the fold axis onto the cross section perpendicular to the actual fold plane by rotating the fold image along the three coordinates and scaling it and extrude the cross section along the fold axis into a 3D body. We will now continue to shape the fold geometry in its spatial orientation with the help of a georeference DEM, the digital elevation model. Once we finalize in as much detail as necessary the fold geometry, we can add internal layers directly through loop cut.
For completeness, I will also add the geometry of the heart and competent limestone layers that make up the core of the fold. The core was deformed in disharmony to the outer heart limestone layer, separated through a thick, ductile, deformed mall unit. If you are interested in viewing this beautifully exposed old thrust belt, please refer to my video, the link to which is given below. I hope that this tutorial has provided you with valuable learnings and insights how to use blendages to build a three-dimensional structural model. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative and enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more geological content.